Welcome back. Today we're going to be painting our Hive Tyrant slash Lord of Afflictions. We got him all primed up with our Zenithal Prime. And we're going to start off with like the the pink, the pinkish, like the brain, the little exposed parts of his, his body, the goo, if you will, the pink flesh as they call it on the back of the box. There's still some kind of areas that I'm not 100% sure about yet, about like what color they're gonna be. So we're just gonna kind of play along here and figure it out as we go. So let's just get it and start poking in some of those areas there. Probably don't need to do that because it's so small. I think I'm just looking at it as we're going here. Let me see. So mainly the areas we want to focus on are like these little open bits here. And you can see them right here. Get that pink in there. Probably the mouth too, the inside of the mouth at least. Because this is the lowest level. And like I say, we always want to start toward the bottom, kind of like you would on the bottomless layer, kind of like you would put your clothes on, right? You would go underwear first, then pants. So you don't want to paint the, the pants first without doing the underwear kind of deal. So just kind of think of it like that as like a, an order of operations of how you would do things. Watch some tutorials online how to do like a rusted paint look. And that's kind of what we're going to go for the carapace of this guy. We gotta get all these little pink bits first. It's super windy, so hopefully, hopefully you guys aren't hearing that because it's pretty rough. I don't know if this is like carapace or what, but let's let's go with that. It. It's pinky pink flesh. Let's go with that. We're gonna try some new stuff on this guy. You can see it's like my proof of concept model. We'll try doing like some highlights and all that kind of stuff later with like a lighter pink to really kind of sell these colors on him. If you can't see in here, this is a pretty tight model that I have to get into the little nooks and crannies of to get some of these pieces. I try my best not to hit the other parts that were making different colors as best as we can. So there's that leg. There's stuff here on the inside here. It is black though, so it's gonna be very hard to figure out to paint because it'll it's not gonna show up as bright on purpose. So just doing our best to get those little Little teeny tiny areas. 
there we see that. Anything on the inside of the arms, not really anything in there to really go for, except up here. Get rid of this. Put little, little bits in there. We gotta go into this arm now. Just try not to hit the the white parts. I mean, we're definitely gonna, um, but just try your best to limit the damage as much as possible because it will affect the green that we put over the top of this stuff. Something here we got that. Let's check the back. Okay, we gotta get the backs of these arms. It's feeling the model's feeling a little chalky. So perhaps I didn't shake the can up enough. The can of primer. I put on it. It's definitely something you have to look out for when you're painting is making sure your can of paint is shaked, is shook enough. model be without some sort of exposed part of their body. Some part, some exposed part of their guts, their insides. Now we get this and this part here. We'll be painting over that with a different color, so it'll be fine. Okay, so I think that about covers what we need for that. Um, now we're going to get the wings. The wings are also going to be this pink color. Let's... My water is almost empty. Let's have a little water bottle next to here that I can fill up my water whenever evaporates. Um, so let's switch to a little bit bigger of a brush because um, it's not a ton of really tight areas we're working with here but we do want to do our best to keep off the, um, the little connecting bits right here like these guys because those are going to be green. So let's get this brush wet. Let's shake this up again. Okay. Just be careful around those edges. Just use like a thin amount of 
the contrast to keep our shadows all intact in there. So you can just put your put it on your brush and then use it for the whole area as much as you can. Just kind of spread it around and share the share the wealth of it of its of its tone throughout the model. And that'll keep and then also like give you like a good variety of colors on the different sections. Just don't want it to be too thin, but about there is good. Same thing, we gotta get in here. Pardon my head if it gets in the way for a second, but this is a little bit of a tight area. Just want to get it in here. Make sure you're getting the bottom of the wing. You're doing this too. Here we get the next section. So if you get it on the spot, do your best to get it off because when you put the green on, it is lighter. So the red will definitely show up. Let's clean that. Get a little bit more and then just kind of start filling in the, the areas here. Just kind of move it around to help thin it out because you don't want like I think this is already starting to dry so that's why the colors look so drastic right now but we'll see hopefully it's not too thick to repoint the brush here you can probably use a better brush than this this brush is kind of sucking let's go to this guy it is a little big but we'll have more control of it. I think, I feel like we will. Could be totally wrong here. But let's put just a little bit on the brush here. That's too little. See, I'm wrong, this brush sucks. <laughs> Back to this guy. I feel like this one's getting too, this one's too dark, but it might have been that it is darker back in there, so we'll kind of let it, we'll let it go for now. Deal with it later. Get this 
smooth as the coat as we can. Try not to leave any streaks in the coverage. Just be careful around these line, these little wing bits here. And the last part up here. And just like do like we did before and just use what we got on our brush that that one dip to uh oh there's a kitty that's sad. John do Hey What's going on? Why are you sad? Oh okay. Well I think I'm being summoned by the kitty cat. So let me just finish this little section here and then we We'll pause and then come back to this section here. So let's just finish this out here. Get the bottom. So like that's where we're at with the wings right now. My cat is demanding attention, so I guess I'm gonna do that. Oh no, he's now he's just laying down. Maybe he's not demanding attention. You okay, bud? Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's keep going at this. We got this side now. I want to get the insides first just because this is the tightest area to get. brush off here and then we can see some like drips in here so let's do our best to smooth those out so that we don't have drips in here. I want it to be as smooth as possible. Same thing here so I guess get some on our brush. work through all these areas here. I'm keeping it pretty thin because I do want like the transparency of these like wing membranes to be a thing, you know? You know how wings are? They're not like just a solid piece. They're like a little sinewy and thin. You can see that the light through them. So we're trying to get something similar to that going on with our limited paint skills here. So let's just move all this through here. Just kind of slowly pull from the top to bring thinner bits here. Okay. 
We want it to be smooth still, even though it's thin, we don't want it to be all splotchy. We definitely want to cover up the white. that. Looking better. Now we just keep going through this here. That's a lot so just kind of wipe it off your brush and use what you put in there. And we're starting from the top where it's more bunched in and bringing the color down to where it should be getting lighter as we go towards the bottom or in this case like the paint's getting thinner as we bring it down from the top and I think my cat's doing something he's not supposed to because of course I don't know what it is I have to go investigate And I'm kind of pulling paint back away from here. To help thin it out some more. like a spot here that didn't get painted. Kind of looks like. that with our fingers if we get it messed up. It's over here it's mostly black so it'll be fine. And then we'll get the last section on the front side. dry all the way before we move to the back because we don't want to smear or like send bubbles in the wrong direction or anything like that so just like that it off with our finger there for a second. And then just pull that into there. There we go. So that's the front. So we're gonna let this dry and then we'll go to the back um, just because we don't wanna mess up what we have. So we'll see you in a second. Okay, we're back. 
we're back. This thing's had time to dry. I also realized that I had missed some spots with the pink before, which you were probably screaming at. You're like, hey, you missed those spots. So let's go through here. And they're right here. On the, the little smokestacks. That's what I'm calling them. I'm calling them smokestacks. Can't stop me. probably not going to be able to see it because the wings are in the way right now, but I assure you I am in there painting them. Let's get this side now. mission of painting the wings. Here, getting inside the tendons and stuff like that. Let's get it down here for this one. It's like on its last legs. It's like, help me! Why are you doing this to me? And instead of painting, it's like sucking up the paint right now, which is cool, but not really what we're going for. to keep it darker up here at the top of the, the wing I feel like there's a better brush for this because this thing is driving me crazy. I was trying back to that brush that I was like, this brush sucks. Um, kind of just see what happens with this. I feel like I can get a better. My lights, I feel like it would be better if I'm using this brush because then I can just kind of like blend it like that. Same thing here. I can like diffuse it over a larger surface area than with a 
little brush. Just gotta be a little careful around the, the big areas here. So I'm gonna go like this again. Get some on there. Put it kind of up in a here. The, the brush's thickness to our advantage to where it can help suck up more paint while we're also like massaging it into like the higher points. So here, get that there and just kind of help pull the pink down. Gonna blanket the area a little better. Like that. Same thing, just kind of pull it down toward the bottom of the wing. Try to keep it smooth. Try not to have a bunch of streaks in it. I got this big old window next to my painting desk now, so sometimes I get these glares that I don't want. And I'm like, no! Natural light is good though, because it does help you to see areas that you don't normally, it lights it a little differently than you're used to. So then you can help spot some problem areas or areas that you miss. It also makes you miss areas that you know you don't really miss so you know double-edged sword right? Okay, there's that part. Now we gotta go to this wing. Just kind of dry off the brush a little bit so we can wipe some more of this clean so it's a little lighter. Just use the belly of the brush to kind of drag along these areas and create your wet reservoirs for you to dip your paint into when you're pulling. To leave it thinner out here at its whitest point. And again, you wanna clean up all these streaks you don't want. It's to look like an onion. Just getting there. 
And I haven't figured out what color the claws are gonna be yet. I don't, maybe like a gray. Maybe that'll go fine with the Nurgle paint scheme. Um, Cause I would do it the pink also, but this doesn't make sense. Like this is like fleshy bits. I want the flesh to be the pink, but to paint like a hard surface that color too doesn't really make a lot of sense. So maybe like a gray would be cool, like a cool contrast, not contrasting color, but just like a different color than what I'm gonna be going with because we're going with a lot of earthy tones um, for the skin and stuff. So it might kind of harmonize well with the rest of the piece. Let's see, we'll see. That's like the last thing that we have to worry about though right now. We got a lot of colors. I was thinking ye yellow might also be cool. Yellow might play better into the Nurgle um, aspect of everything because it is kind of like a you know sickly color. Yeah, yellow might work. Yellow might be cool. Just looking at it as I'm doing this, like thinking about those colors. Like, mm -hmm. I think yellow would look nice next to the green of the flesh and the brown of the carapace and stuff like that. And it's low effort because we can do that with, with, um, contrast paint and then if it's not what we want we just paint over the top of it with regular paint so we're not losing a lot by doing checking it out at least you know we're not losing the ability to do some to try something later if we do it that way anyway all right so there are our there's all the pink areas for guy. Now we're gonna go into the greens. And that is gonna require a different br brush, I think. Just looking at it, I was like, hmm. I think the smaller brush would work. This is gonna be a little messy. And actually, we have a little bit of a bigger brush here that we can try out. We have this guy. It's not quite as big as that, but not as small as the other one is. And it's new, so hopefully it doesn't mess up. And we got our Plague Bearer Flesh Contrast Paint. And that's what we're gonna be using for the body of this guy. So let's get this all nice and shook it up. Our nice sickly green and let's start let's start from the top and work our way down just because um, and we can hold it down here for now And this also has a better point on it than that other brush. Just work on one side at a time. Let's 
being careful not to hit those areas that we already painted. There's a darker color in there, so it should take over as the primary color when it dries if we do get a little bit in there. But we're trying our best not to change up any of the tones here. Ooh, in this shadow, <laughs> that's yours. Not fun right now to deal with while I'm painting. here, get around these little claws. Let's kind of set it here so we can have a stable setting to get these guys. Slow, slow and steady. There. Doing our best to avoid the spikes, especially since we are going to be using contrast paint on them later. So, try not to hit them right now, because they'll mess with the color later. Spikes need to be yellow too, so just kind of working around the areas here. And we can put some there so it blends into our yellow that we use later. It's going to be a little different under here just because it's a lot of black paint. So we're just going to put this on and hope that the green tint kind of pops through. Just reshake that because it's been sitting for a while. Then we get here, same thing, it's black, but we're hoping that the green kind of tints the black a little bit for us. I'm just getting here while we're here. Hitting the carpus right now doesn't matter because that is going to be a brown paint paint, so we are good. And then let's get this leg here and this bit of his tail area now we gotta go back here 
here and then start getting this bit back here. It's like all this flesh back here. Same thing, it's okay if we hit the car carapace, 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 whatever you want to call it, right now, because it is a paint that we're going to be using, not a contrast, so that's like a good thing to know, like when you're doing your painting is like, you know, where you can afford to make short, take shortcuts and, you know, what you're doing with your model, kind of have a plan at what goes where and the order of which you're doing it so that you can do things like this, where it'll speed up your process instead of having to worry about not touching it this whole time. I can just paint. Sorry if I'm taking it out of view for a second. It's just some of these, it's a little tight to paint some of these areas. Make sure you get all along the top there. And then get here. And you can paint pretty thick with the contrast in the black areas. That'll help it pop out more. We do have this seam here from the model kit. We could, we could fill it, um, but you'd want to do that before you're painting it. So if you are going to fill it, definitely do that before you paint primer and all that. Unless you're using like some like high fill primer, which I don't know how that would work on models if it's going to cover up too much detail. But you can definitely give it a shot. And let me know how it find <laughs> let me know how it turns out in the comments. Um, Cause I mean, I, if it fills out, if it fills in some of these cracks, it might be worth it, worth a shot um, to save on some cleanup time. Especially for like you guys that, you know, clean your mold lines and all that stuff too. Um, like a high fill automotive primer be crazy Let's see. you gotta keep moving around these angles and finding out what needs paint on it what doesn't need paint on it it's a little it's a little game remember how I was like we need to work top to bottom and then I proceeded to paint like the whole bottom of this model you know do do what I say not what I do This whole face painted. Trying to keep it neat in the face area. We can leave those white, his teeth and everything white. He brushes his teeth. He's a good boy. He's a good, he's a good Tyranid Nurgle boy.
And trying our best here with the lighting that we have. this like inside detail stuff before I forget it later so I'm just kind of poking in there right now to make sure I got it shaking bum ba bum 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 right that's how that, that goes that song goes Sorry if my head is in the way. I apologize. I am in super intense paint mode. Okay. Let's reshake this. Another thing is just yeah, making sure you have. That's why we let it dry is so that we we know we have a spot to grab the model from. That's an important part in model painting is making sure you have a sturdy place to grab it. And you can go from there. It makes things a lot simpler when. You have a anchor point to, that you know is stable and you don't have to worry about grabbing it in certain spots. Which is also why some of these like more fiddly models are are tough, right? Because especially like Night Haunt, right? You don't know where you can grab that thing all the time. Because even forget that a dry paint spot, but like let's talk about like a place that's stable enough that won't snap when you grab it. So you just got to be careful and you know it helps you learn your model better right you get to explore it when you're when you're figuring out like hand holds for it and all that kind of stuff Which also, like, if you're making miniatures, that's one thing to think out of too while you're building them is like, where are the mold lines going to be? How do these pieces go together? How is the person going to hold it when they're painting it? Like, you know, those are all valid concerns. Like, I've made a few molds before, and I'm like, how is this going to work? Like, how am I going to paint this? How how is it going to go together? Where should the seam lines go? Um, 
those are just important things to think of that I feel like a lot of places don't think of all the time. Um, you know, it is, sometimes you just want to get it done and sometimes you want to do it right. And they can't, <laughs> one, they can't exist without the other one, so sometimes you just gotta bite the bullet and do it right. There's also like a difference of doing stuff like for commercial like use and then stuff for personal use. Like you might take more time on something that you are gonna sell versus something that is just for yourself. Um, I've built some some like kit Star Wars helmets before. And those things are always disappointing, like how dirty their molds are and how pronounced some of the mold lines are. And you're just like, come on guys, like you're selling this for a premium price and you're not even doing like a good job of making the mold or Once we're done with this, to the green, we're definitely gonna have to let it dry because we're not gonna be able to touch it if we go, if we move on with it like in this state. So. I'll give time for the sun to go down to a little bit more. That I'm not sitting here in a super dark shadow. And you can see it's a little messy in there. Like we're not, we didn't get perfect on like some of those areas and especially on the wings, like there's some, definitely some spillover. Um, it's okay, these are the little teeny details that once we're done painting, if you wanted to go back and fix, it would be pretty simple, like especially for contrast paints, you would just paint the area white and then go over it with the contrast again. I wish I would have switched to this brush earlier than using those other brushes because that would have avoided a lot of these problems that we're having right now. All right, so that's all of our green, I believe. Make sure I got the tail, yeah, so that's all of our green and then our, our pink is done. So next we'll go into the claws, actually we can probably get the claws right now, honestly, like, because those are gonna need to draw you too before we move on to other sections. So let's do that, let's just do it. Let's just bite the bullet and go for it. So we're gonna use this Allende in Yellow contrast paint. I'm gonna use this for all the spikes, so. Right now we're gonna hold it in one spot, which is gonna be here. And we're gonna go for the spike. So this is one, the, the head horn. We should have waited, but we've gone too far. 
Put it there. right here we're gonna get you know what, maybe we can put him on this big handle paint handle we've got it in here there okay so maybe this will help a bit Get the tip of the tongue here. And then these little chest spikes. You can see some areas where we missed with the green that we'll have to go in with and fix. But right now we're focusing in on the spikes. So let's get those. These spikes are on top of that carapace, so we're gonna leave those ones alone. But we are gonna get the whole claw here. Yeah, so any of the spikes on top of the carapace pieces, we will not be painting yellow. Just because it doesn't make sense to go in there and do that. Especially with how we're gonna be painting like the rusty bits, it, does, it, would, it would be a nightmare to then try and, you know, deal with the spikes on top. I guess I could do them last if I really wanted to. But it does it does also does that add a lot to the model, which I don't think it will. Okay, let's turn it like this way, get the inside of the arms here, and then get the little spiky bit there on his little talons. Okay, and then we'll get spikies here. Little claws here. Spikies here. Let's turn it around and make sure we get the other sides of them. See how shaky my hand is right now by just looking at the model, how much it's moving. Oh, see, like that, like that's why having a supported model is pretty important because then it won't flop around like that. Also like a little claw in here, a little bit in there that we can kind of get it. Then we go here, this claw, that claw, and then the big under claw right here. Which even still, like, you know, I was saying, like, you know, how we're doing the other part, it's going to be hard to paint the spikes on top. Like, we still might hit some of the yellow with the brown anyway, so. Because we're going to be using a sponge to do some of the painting there. Which we haven't really used, like, sponge techniques on the channel yet, so. It'll be cool for you guys to see. Not really, it's just a guy using a sponge. But it'll give you, it'll just add more tools to your 
your box of tricks, which is always important. baby claws in there. Okay. Now let's get the backs here. It's smart to do the yellow now instead of later. It's just gonna save us a lot of Time later on. And that way I don't have to cut the video in like a million different places. Okay, there's all of the yellow done. Let's go in and clean up the green and knock the whole model over, you know? You know, just, you know, just do little things like that. So here, I'm missing these little areas right here on the, the inner inner bit. I think we missed it on this side too. No, we're good. Okay. And then I think we should also paint the tongue and inside of the mouth while we're here because otherwise we're gonna get too far and then we're not gonna want to do it later and then you'll be like guys you guys will be like why didn't you do it? So let's go to that pink again. Let's go back to it. Voluptuous pink. And then do our best to avoid oop, to avoid touching the teeth while we're in here. But it's okay because it is such a small part of this model. You can't really see in there. Probably better for us to actually just touch it. So let's just get that over with. And we can just paint the teeth later. If we remember, it's a big if. Okay, so there, we have all the, the colors, all the contrast done for the model. So far, I think actually, yeah. This is a giant car carapace, so we're not gonna worry about that, even though, like the plates are what I have on here. But don't worry guys, don't worry. Right, so yeah, we'll let all this dry and then we will come back and start on the actual painting with the paints. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, we're back and we are dry and we are going to start working on the armored section of the model. And what we're gonna do is like a rusty effect. So to achieve that, we're gonna start with a really dark brown that's like reddish. This is a whole red color from Vallejo. We're gonna start with that with as our base. And then we're gonna move to like a orangey brown or a brown and mix orange into it um, to achieve what we're, we're looking for here. So let's get our whole red down. And then we'll start Let's 
start working on this. And we'll start from the bottom. And now is when we're covering up all those mistakes that we made when we were originally painting the model and getting the skin and stuff covered. So, yeah, just take your time here. Get on the little sections. Same thing here, we start here. I don't know why I didn't paint those. Um, these guys yellow, so we'll probably have to have to either go in and do that yellow or Change up the color on those. We wanted to get as good as a coverage as you can on, on it. Don't want to leave, especially don't want to leave any white showing. So do your best to get into those areas, especially these overhangs right here, to make sure that those, that those get covered. So I'm just getting the chest right now, so that way I don't forget. the lower half of the model. Back here. I didn't turn on my lights, even though I don't think they're making that much of a difference, but Let's see. Maybe we gotta get this leg. Just trying our best to get in between those details there, knowing that we probably will be hitting them, and that that's okay. We thought of that while we were painting it, and we're like, all right, well, these are probably gonna get covered with the black, so, I mean, with the brown, so don't stress too much about it. If I wanted to, you could switch, if you wanted to, you could switch to a way smaller brush, and get in there. We're doing the same sections on each one so that it's at least coherent. Maybe I get 
this little guy in here. big leg pieces here and like we said we're gonna go through these spikes and these spikes will be the same color as the armor because it would be hard for us to go in here and pick out the pieces individually and really get a nice clean finish on it so here doing our best to get the part here where it meets the leg we can repoint our brush Okay, I got the legs done. Let's get the claws. Let's get nice and clean around here. I just finish these off by going in the same direction as they are going. And then here, doing the same thing. Let's get in there where you can and start brushing the armor.
Okay. Now we get the head. And the back piece. I think maybe I should fill that with pink back there so it's more like like the inside of the carapace so we'll probably do that so let's just work focus on the outside edges here of this whole guy so we can get him painted nicely work like a panel at a time or that's what I'm telling myself now but who knows what I'll put it to what will happen as we kind of push forward into this model I have some idea different ideas for the colors of the piece on top here so we're just kind of painting around it right now But we're not worrying about being too careful because we will be using paint colors, not, not contrast for it. So it's okay if we get some color on it. to be a little bit more stable than it is right now. I'm kind of pushing it against my chest and hands to get between those pieces. Cool, we got that one. Let's see if we can do this one the same way. We're kind of like lightly brushing over this because then if it's light enough, if I put light enough pressure on it, it won't go over the pink. It will just kind of flow over the top of it when I'm painting here. Now how are we gonna protect it when we do the other parts? I don't know. <laughs> so stay tuned for that, that adventure. But we'll definitely need this to dry before we kind of move on, so. Let's focus on getting this done. Actually, maybe we won't. Maybe it being wet will help blend the stuff together. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. We'll see. Just trying to get in between the little grabby claws of this extra bit on top of him here. I'm getting the 
this because this part's easy to get with the paint here. In one respect, these are easy, easier to paint because they have a lot of clear areas where it is easy to figure out where paint goes. But also there's a lot of overlap of some of these pieces, so it does make it a little challenging in some areas to go through. there. The same thing on this side. You can probably get here. Just trying to keep most of this as clean as possible so that when the paint goes on I don't have to put it on thick or anything like that. Okay. So now let's go here to this side. Hopefully you can see it but the wings are kind of in the way. Like I was saying, there's a lot of overlappy type pieces here that we're dealing with. A lot of surfaces that kind of take up the same space. Let me paint that guy. Go through here, paint the inside there. Maybe I'll just paint all the backs first since they don't have the that I have to worry about on them. Just getting inside the little holes and stuff that are in these. Same thing inside the top. because the details were too small for me to get in there right when I did the pink, so they don't have any of the pink on them. Clean up those areas around the our exhaust tubules is what I'm calling them, I don't know. Our tyranid smokestacks. sure that we're getting as much of the visible white as we can off the models. Okay. Now I gotta do my best to get into these areas here. And apologies if the wings are in the way and all that. Um, is very challenging in this area to film. So I'm just kind of taking stabs at it from the different angles that I can see it at. Okay, now we gotta get this side, flip it around. This wing's definitely going to be in the way, in the way. So let me just work through this as fast as I can for you guys, so that we can maybe get to the other stuff. Hopefully, my hair is not just like all up in there. You know, maybe when you do this yourself, if you are doing something like this, paint those insides last. Um, save yourself some time. 
um, fighting with it earlier on. Okay, just make sure I get all those white bits. Okay, now we get the tail. See, I can, I'm going fast on the big surfaces because I know I can hit them carefully and get them covered, but when I get to the smaller areas, I slow down with my brushing to avoid as best as I can getting a, a bunch of it on spots that I don't want it on. So you kind of got to go around these little nubs separately make sure that they get painted. My, like I said, I think I said this earlier is you might want to consider building this in subsection, painting this in subsection, subassemblies, and then just putting it together after it's painted. I looked at it at first and I thought I could do it um, fine how it was when it was built fully together, but now thinking back on it, probably would do it a little different. Okay, so that's all of our brown taken care of on him. So now we gotta kind of rust it up a bit. And to do that, we're gonna be using a sponge to go at the, the bits that we want. So what I recommend getting, well, I definitely recommend having, you need two sponges. So I have like an, like an old makeup sponge from my wife that I have, and but you can also use um, some blister packs come with with foam that you could be using to rip off too, and like any type of like you want you don't want super dense foam. You want like well, this might not be so great. We'll find out as we go. Um, what happens with it? So we'll have two two different ones for two different colors. So the first one we're going to be doing is we're going to be going for that orangey. Brown. So we're gonna get this monster brown um, from Army Painter. I mean, yeah, from Army Painter. Yeah, Army Painter. We're gonna mix that. Put that down with some orange to get like a rusty orange type color. This might be the wrong way of going about it, but you know we're experimenting. We're trying new stuff. We're trying to put Tyranids in. into Age of Sigmar. So we're gonna do what we can. So let's like mix this together. And you don't have to do like a crazy good job of mixing it. And we're gonna kind of like dry brush with the, the, the thing. So we get our thingy, we dip it into the, into the paint and then we wanna take off a lot of it. We want to we're gonna kind of dry we're gonna kind of dry brush with it. So then take it and then just kind of poke at the areas. And start building up some fatigue on the areas. And you don't want to drag, you just want to poke. You said poke, poke, poke. And 
think some of it can be thicker than others. some on here that we don't need. Kind of stick it into the areas that you need it. Where can I, where can I hold this? The wings? Let me just get the chest well I can have it over here. Just dabbing onto the brown. Poking, poking it in here. Then it's good. It's really subtle right now, which is not what we really want. So then maybe let's go for a little bit more orange in here. Scoop it out because it's not being friendly. I'm surprised I shouldn't have done that, but I did. So, <laughs> and let's dip our brush. There we go, that's better. That's better, so let's go back through some of these areas that we had before. And get this more rusted orangish brown on here. And just keep poking and prodding and getting it into those areas on the brown that we want. Need to get some different holds on this guy to get, maybe just go like here on this side first, get the fronts of these. around those edges, all the seams. Want the fronts of these guys. So 
that's that. Now we can get in with more targeted um, of a like green, greenish orange. Now let's think, let's think of this. Maybe just flat orange at this point. Um, so we have a little bit more, like a yellow, we'll mix a yellow and a orange together to get kind of a color that we want here. So let's just put some orange down. And we're gonna be lighter than we were on the last one. So let's get this and let's get this like sunny yellow. I'm gonna try our best to go pretty light on this. Clean this brush really good. Okay, so we'll try to use the smaller end here. Let's just rip it so it has some more texture to it. lighter than the other color was. And you can leave it kind of wet, just been missing the head part here too so just get in there get more of the end the end pieces here kind of let's get the edges and the seams as best we can There goes that. I was gonna put that in the water for some reason. Um, let's get our pink to fill in the insides here, like we were talking about. So let's go with this brush. Actually, no, let's go with this brush. I hit the just as quickly get this done. All right, clean off the brush. We got to clean these areas that we touched here. So here. We actually have some sponge here. It was left over. We can just use that to dab it out. Cool. And dab that out there. Cool. We 
saved it. We saved it. And then now, I just want to get the top braiding piece. And for that, we're gonna use a brown. We're gonna use this. German Camo Beige World War II. And okay. And then we're going to paint Oops. Of course, I hit a part that I didn't want to. Get in this little synapse thingy painted just to sell that nurgly guts and stuff more so we put this on him Now what we're going to do is do some dry brushing of the actual talons and stuff with this brown to get a little bit more definition on the browns. So let's just take it, we got most of it off this brush. We're just going to go over go over these little sections to give some more. Some more definition to them. We're just going to be doing like a little upward, <laughs> upward. <laughs> swipes to them. Getting our cat hair off our brush like we do. I treat this as like chipping or you know there's stuff on their claws that they've been using forever. Let's go there. I think what we can do here is kind of just edge the model here, just kind of take our edge and then. Flick up on it. Just give like some more dimension to it. Just wipe this off and get the head. I keep forgetting the head. And 
Same thing back here, just kind of get the spine and then the little corners here. Different separations between the, the plates. Same thing on top here, we can probably do some there, let's go here. Get the backs of these feet. Okay, and then lastly, we're going to get our white and just clean up our teeth, and then we'll be done with our Tyranid Hive Tyrant slash Swarm Lord slash um, Nurgle guy. Hope you guys enjoyed this and that you know hopefully maybe there'll be more tiered stuff I don't I don't I'm not 100% sure just because you're buying a bunch of models and stuff I don't know we'll see we'll see gotta get this yellow on the little spikies on the bottom that we didn't get and I hope you guys are liking the podcast and all of that jazz Um, please comment, like, and subscribe, hit that notification button, you know, just let me know what, what you're working on or what, what your dream army or like ideas are for like new armies that aren't in game, like Age of Sigmar or, uh, Warhammer 40k, but yeah, so there's our guy and we'll see you next time.